These are three tips which I believe every street photographer can infinitely benefit from. Hey guys, it's Ben here from Ben's Guide and today I'm glad to be sharing these tips with you that I've been learning through my street photography journey. If you haven't yet, I'd love to have you join our community of photographers and filmmakers here at Ben's Guide. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. This may surprise some of you, but using automatic settings, in this case, aperture priority, will definitely improve how many successful street photos you capture when you're out doing street photography. So we're always getting told in videos, you have to use manual mode, don't use automatic settings, or if you're a pro, you use manual mode. Now, we know that this is not the truth. It's important to use manual mode, and for certain circumstances, it's great. But for street photography, using manual mode and switching between your settings can result in regularly missing opportunities. So if you want to actually do street photography more professionally, using aperture priority is actually the correct thing to do. Street life is fast paced in many situations and you don't have the time to react to a photo opportunity which instantly comes out in front of you. Having your camera in AV mode means that in most instances you can quickly change your aperture setting if you need to control your depth of field. I usually have my ISO set on a max setting. This means that I don't go over that because I don't want to get grain or color artifacts in my image. Also, I set my shutter speed to go no lower than 1 over 250th. This means that I won't get affected by motion blur. And apart from that, all I've got to take care of now is aperture. This means that I can react much faster to moments which quickly unfold in front of me. To add to this, I also usually shoot in low continuous mode or low burst mode. Why? Well, subjects like people, trams, cars, they're moving in your scene and you're not always able to get the composition correct first time. So with low continuous mode, you get a few attempts at capturing a moving subject, which makes it considerably more likely that you'll get the shot that you want. And at the same time, don't shoot in high continuous mode. Make sure it's low continuous mode because you don't want lots of photos to be sorting through at the end of the day. I don't just want you to actually take my word for this though. I encourage you to go out and try this for yourself and experience this in your own street photography. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. There's no kind of photography like street photography that lends itself towards shooting in all kinds of weather conditions. Well, maybe landscape photography, but that's it. If it's sunny, if it's overcast, raining, snowing, whatever the weather conditions are, this actually just opens up more opportunities and variety for your street photos. If you go out when it's sunny, you have strong contrast between the lights and darks in your photos which is perfect for black and white photography and causing separation in your scene. Also, it's really good for things like leading lines and kind of capturing people's eye. If it's raining or it's been raining and it's overcast, you're then able to get beautiful moody tones which transform the feel of your scene. You're also gifted with gorgeous reflections which you can actually get some of the best and most stunning street photos from. If it's nighttime and it's dark, as long as you've got a lens with a low aperture, you can capture the city as it comes alive at night, creating a completely different canvas to work with. All the bright lights and the neon lights from shops and cars and buildings are on and it just creates some really beautiful opportunities when you're shooting at that time of day. Every kind of weather and every kind of time of day gives you more opportunities. So when you get these weather conditions in future and you're thinking about street photography, know that these could potentially be the conditions which give you some of your best street photos yet. Pun5 is the world's largest stock video marketplace with over 25 million clips to choose from. It provides creators and filmmakers with an unparalleled selection of the best media available in one place. Pun5 has a media library which includes the highest standard of royalty-free premium video clips, which are available to use straight away in your projects. In addition to video, Pond5 also has a huge selection of music, sound effects, photos, graphics, After Effects templates and 3D models. You'll never have to look anywhere else for your media solutions. To get started, you can create a free account today. 
Choose from a large library of free content and then start creating. And if you want to take your storytelling and content creation to the next level, Pond5 have a choice of tailor-made custom solutions to choose from, meeting every creator's needs with a best price guarantee on all your media. You can jump in today and get 20% off any of these options by using the link in the video description. So you can also check out Pond5's Refer and Earn program where you can earn on day one just by referring other users. This is in addition to the incentives you get by contributing your work to the Pond5 marketplace. Check out Pond5's site to learn more. One thing I hear all the time is you should be using a prime lens for your street photography. Now this statement is kind of right, but it's far too general and I'll tell you why. There are two kinds of people who do photography. There are extroverts and there are introverts. Extroverts are outgoing, socially confident people who are a lot more likely to make quick connections with people around them. That's because they feel confident and comfortable in these situations. And unless they're like, in your face and annoying, then you're probably gonna warm to these people quicker. That's because they are being themselves. They're not trying to fake this confidence and because of that, they're not giving off weird vibes. They're authentic. Introverts, on the other hand, are generally people which are shy. They're quiet and more internal, which usually means that they're less socially confident, but there's nothing wrong with that. So if you're interested in street photography as an introvert and you watch a video which says you must be shooting with a prime lens to get candid photos of people, then this could make you feel quite uncomfortable. Having to get up close and personal with the public can sometimes be a scary thing. And even some people can take a dislike to you when you're taking photos. I have experienced this many times. If you're an extrovert, a prime lens will be a better choice. It's sharper, provides you with more stops of aperture, and you'll feel a lot more comfortable getting into those close situations with people. If you're an introvert, you can use a zoom lens. This is gonna make you feel more comfortable because you can shoot from a distance and you'll enjoy your street photography a lot more. I wanna say a big thank you to you for watching the video today. I always appreciate you watching these videos that I make. Hit that like button if you enjoy the video because that really helps this video get out to more people and it kind of works better on the YouTube somehow. Also, apply these tips. If you actually looked at these and thought, hmm, that's not a bad idea, then apply them to your photography. You could really notice a big difference. Guys, whatever you do for the rest of the day today, I just hope it's a really good one and I will see you all in the next video.